and TDH welcome as we bring in our guest for the day. We've got Dr. Kaiwan Brown from NMAC. We're talking here health today. Okay, okay. Calm, calm, calm down, calm, calm down. It's, it, okay. Oh, Lord. Doc, welcome to, this is what, 958 episodes and we finally got you on. I heard you throw me out of the bus, cousin. I heard you throw me out of the bus. For everybody, me and Jamal, we go way back. We were we were high school best friends and mm -hmm. and, and and all of that. And he's been getting me on this show for forever. But I'm here now. I'm here now. Yeah, and, well, um, let's see how this goes. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Honestly, we're happy to have you. And um, I I think couldn't have come with a better topic because you still have a full hair. Larry still has a full head of hair. <laughs> Despite my genetics, which we've been talking about, but yes. Yeah, I will talk about that. But let's talk about it. Um, what, what are some of the most common causes? Like you just mentioned, is it genetics? What causes uh, hair loss? Genetics is probably one of the most common causes, actually, because, you know, it runs in our family. My, my hairline um, was receding until I had to get treatment from Dr. Brown's laboratory uh, because hair loss runs in my family. My, my mother's side, most of the, most of the men are, are thinning. And... Mm -hmm. I'm like, uncles, you're making me look bad. You're going to come here to get some treatment. But some people, as men, they can let things go, right? And some of these guys look very good bald. For me, I did that Snapchat filter. It just wasn't working for me, cousin. So I said, let's, let's keep these curls going. Um, <laughs> other, <laughs> other causes is hormonal. You know, as, as women go through pregnancy, they may have some shedding, menopause, et cetera, thyroid disease, et cetera. Um, then we have medical conditions that affect the scalp. You know, at, at North Shore, we have the only hearing scalp disorder clinic. So for those who are suffering from any sort of hair loss or scalp disorders, there's treatment on the island that's very, very effective. Um, and then we've got medications. You know, um, we're going to talk about medications like for blood pressure and cholesterol. Now, don't stop your medication, people. Please don't. But um, just know that this can also cause some hair loss because some of the properties of hair is cholesterol. And by lowering that systemically, you can get some hair loss. But there's ways of counteracting that without stopping your medication. And then we have stress and nutrition and, and, you know, one that's very common, you know, especially I think in our Afro race is excessive styling, excessive mm -hmm. styling, too much perms, too much relaxers, too much heat, you know, I, you know, we're going, I'm good. I'm natural. Right. So, you know, we got people that are going flat pressing every day before going to work. Ladies, that is just way too much heat. You are just burning and frying those, those there's hair follicles and there's hair strands. Um, and, you know, there are things that you can do to mitigate that, but there are, are times when you should cycle on to a more protective style that doesn't require all of that excessive heat and styling. Because that's what we call trichiax and nardosa, which is excessive, excessive um, over styling. Well, you, you mentioned nutrition, and I want to touch on that real quickly. Like, are there certain foods we should be eating to maintain healthy hair? Of course, you know, we are what we eat. We are what we eat most, most importantly. So um, I do find that people that are going to excessive dieting will have some shedding. And that's because they're losing those key ingredients, like, like um, omega-3 fatty acids. You can get that from salmon and mackerel and sardines. I know no one really eats sardines. I used to eat them back in the day on the, on the construction site with my grandfather. But, um, you know, fry them up if you want in some olive oil and, and go ahead and consume them. Um, protein is very important. Your eggs, your meats, your lean meats, especially nuts and seeds, almonds, you know, walnuts. If you don't like to eat them um, as a snack, go ahead and put them in a smoothie if you if you like with some berries such as um, um, red berries, you know, um, blackberries, spinach, sweet potato for those who want an alternative to French fries. So we're talking about healthier options, but still getting that beta carotene that's going to be important for hair growth. Indeed. Yeah, it's quite interesting because I still eat, um, I eat, I just started eating sardines, sorry. And yeah, with my salads, it's very good. Yeah, um, it actually tastes nice. You know, um, you can fry them up, you can put them in like yeah. a, 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 a tomato paste stew. We used to eat them raw back in the day with some, with some crackers with my papa, you know. So, yeah. so these types of things we must not um, gravitate away from. Yeah. You mentioned earlier some of the products, but what products or treatment does end up with? Oh, we, we have a whole range. And now we also have hair restoration, hair transplantation. So I've been doing medical hair restoration for about 10 years now um, at the Hair and Scalp Disorder Clinic at North Shore. Um, so we order, um, so, we, so we have, you know, light therapy, um, photolight therapy, we do PRP, we have a whole range of supplements. 
that um, can help to stimulate the, the, that hair growth, um, some DHT blockers for those men and women who are suffering from a male and female pattern hair loss. Remember, we're going to block those hormones, but only at the level of the scalp using some natural natural um, herbs and nothing any not, nothing pharmaceutical. Um, in addition to um, now we've got transplantation coming 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 on do, on board with our Turkish team. They'll be flying in to do that. All right. So what's the procedure for getting transplants or restoration from the specialist? So um, first come in for a consultation. Um, I'm just going to analyze your scalp and just make sure that you have a good donor area. That means the area of the back of the scalp is going to be adequate for harvesting. And um, we take some pictures, we send it off to the Turkish team and they come back with how many um, follicles they think they're safely able to, tr um, to, to, to move around from the back to the front um, transfer. And, um, and you get a quote. It's really, really simple. It's really, really simple. Okay. And this is important because I think some people are always apprehensive. Or well, what are some kinds of, what are some of the risks or complications that could occur? One thing about medical, um, sorry, transplantation, the risks are so, are so rare. Um, but the risks do include infections. And this is why I'm here to, to be able to treat that on island. Um, once the Turkish team leaves after their weeks of stay, um, infections, you have bleeding during the, during the procedure. Some people may feel faintish, but we're going to kind of give you something to make you quite calm during the procedure because it can take up to four to six hours. But the risks are so... I think we lost you. I'm, I'm back. Can you see me? Yes, All yes. Right. Right. Cut out just now, but you can keep continuing. All right. So, um, well, yeah, will you finish, Doc, or you want to continue? Yeah, no. So I was talking about um, the risks are so few or far between. There being infection and bleeding um, during the risk, during the procedure, infection post. And then, um, you know, people just brushing up their graphs, so they have to follow the instructions. But otherwise, it's, it's very, very safe. Okay. Indeed. So what, what advice would you give someone who's concerned about their hair loss? Um, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. You know, it becomes a thing that you can be a bit embarrassed about. But what advice would you give someone? Yeah, so some of the things that I would say is that, first of all, help is available. Um, as I said, you can come down to us in North Shore at the Bermuda's only here in Scalp Disorder Clinic. And, um, you know, it's, it's treatable. It's, it's an option for those who, who choose to just let things go naturally. It's an option for those that, you know, want to choose to wear wigs, toupees, and these types of things. But if you want help, I recommend that you do it early, right? Because I'm not baby Jesus. I can't save everything and everyone. So do come early in the, in the course of your hair loss. Right. Um, audience, if you have any questions or comments, um, please send them through. We'll get through as many as possible. Um, what about conditions like alopecia, right? Um, so some people have told me, depending on grain, there's no coming back from that. Is, is there always a solution for something like that? Well, alopecia is just a medical term for hair loss, right? So alopecia is like calling a car a car, but there's Toyotas, there's Hondas, and, and et cetera. So that's just a general category. Um, there's all types of alopecia, from alopecia areata, which is well circumscribed patches of hair loss to lupus um, hair loss. So there are some conditions that unfortunately we just won't be able to help you with. Um, alopecia areata, yes, I have great success with that. Patients with lupus, we do have to control the underlying cause of the disease. Um, and we have rheumatologists at our office that can help to do that. What I want people to understand is that hair loss is sometimes a, is a manifestation of what's going on internally. So um, I may let you know, get some signs um, from your hair that something may be going internally and I'll refer you to the appropriate specialist. All righty. Um, all right, let's go to the audience. We've got quite a few comments. Um, Anika DeShields, she's asking, is the procedure suitable for males and females? Most definitely, um, both males and females. Um, we're not doing children, so um, you got to be 25 and over generally. Um, but the hair laws usually start on about those patients who are like 25, 35 and above. So it's suitable for, for, for both male and females, yes. All right. Um, she has another question just asking, uh, what is the percentage of males and females that suffer from hair loss are both generally due to genetics? 
Genetics is probably the leading cause. Um, we find for females, they have more of the um, hair loss that's associated with excessive styling and perming. So you gotta be mindful that you space out your chemicals, yours, as well as make sure that your stylist reads the package insert and follows the instructions um, to the latter. Um, because if not, you know, you can develop what we call CCCA, which is a scarring type alopecia as a result of excessive perms um, that are just left in for, for way too long. Um, Charles H. Jeff's second is asking, are anchovies good for you too? I love them in a good Caesar salad because I know you mentioned sardines. How about anchovies? Most definitely. Most definitely. What I, what I advocate is a well-balanced diet, um, good, good fats, lots of nutrients, minerals, etc. So having a well-balanced diet is, of course, going to benefit you, you know, holistically, not just for your hair. Your hair takes the leftovers. So, right. So what I tell patients, when you're nutrient deficient, I'm going to notice it through your hair and your skin because your body is going to say, listen, you're starving me. So I got to give whatever you're, whatever you're feeding me to my internal organs for they, so they can thrive and survive. And the hair is, of course, going to be the casualty of war. I, 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 I remember, um, I know you said different styles can you know, hurt our hair, like perms and the like. Um, I remember, I mean, I was just in a conversation, eavesdropping. Um, someone being told that braiding their hair, like because of the pulling of it, can be, you know, damaging to hair growth and, and can help, you know, lead towards hair loss as well. Is that true? Most definitely. It's called traction alopecia. So um, that's, that's heavy in our community as well as the Afro population because all they want to do is put in braids. Um, and you're going to see those ladies that have braids, they're going that their frontal hairline and their temporal hairline is just going to go back, back, and back, as well as the nape of their neck is just going to exceed. So you gotta, you gotta let out those braids sometimes, ladies. I know summertime, it's, it's harder to wash your hair because you're active in the water, et cetera. And that's fine, but during the winter time, let's go to more protective styling. We're snatching out those edges. That's pretty much what's happening. <laughs> um, Renee Simmons says, what about natural remedies for hair growth like rosemary, cloves, rice, onions, olive oil combination? Is it true these herbs together help with hair loss? Oh, they do actually, they do. But we also get people with contact dermatitis from using those herbs. So we got to be mindful, you know, just because it's natural, it's not meant for everybody. I have a lot of people that come with in very inflamed scalp from using rosemary and these other oils. So um, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, then come in and see us because there are other alternatives. But also, you can consume them as well. They, they work just the same. Oh, okay. Indeed, indeed. Charles H. Jeffs II asking, is it true that hair loss is from your mother's side of the family? Yeah, so there is a genetic predisposition that comes from the mother's side, but also research is showing that it also comes from the father's side to a degree as well. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's predominantly your mother's side. That's why on my mother's side, most of the guys are losing their hair. Anika De Shields asking, is the success rate the same for men and women as far as, um, I guess, their hair re rest restoration? I think that's yes, that's actually it is, but it all depends on where they're starting, right? If you're coming to be completely bold, as I said, I'm not baby Jesus. So I do recommend that if, if people um, do have some, some, some hair loss issues, just come and see us. Um, and, and we can work on that as soon as possible. Also, it's, it's a message to the stylists and, hair, and barbers as well. You're seeing these guys um, once a week or every other week doing their hair. If they're noticing some thinning, you know, let's work together, right? Because if I grow it, you cut it, there's symbiosis. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very interesting because I think um, that's, that collaboration isn't necessarily talked about and I don't know if it's the, the barber you're, you're very comfortable with your barber you know we're old guys who so normally go to the same barber for years and I would like to you know, think that they would be able to reach out more than anybody else yeah and that, and that's really the aim um I don't see it as much per se but you know we're not in competition guys you know if no one's going to come to you if they're bold so let's make it make sense so if if you have options, if you see the early signs of hair dis, hair disease or scalp disorders or hair loss, send them over to the clinic. We'll 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 start treating them. We'll send them back to you for their styling and for their cuts. Let's let's work together. If I um, grow it, you cut it. Wayne Rooney and LeBron James were the first two celebrities I remember who actually got their hair did. You know, they were losing it. Um, but LeBron obviously it, it's not quite working out. He's 
still losing it. And Wayne Rooney had to go back a second time. How long, I mean, obviously it probably depends on the person and their, their grain, but how, how long would it take like for a person who's thin and to, to the point where they don't need to keep going back? Well, I'm, I'm here to be real, right? Um, depends on what type of hair loss condition you have. If you have those genetics, I can't turn them off. Um, I can't turn off the testosterone that's converting to dihydrotestosterone because if not, you become impotent, right? And then I think I would have my, my stamina versus my hair. Um, that's kind of ubiquitous. So I, I, I let people know generally that depending on the type of hair loss that you have, if it's hormonal, you're going to have to be on supplements for the rest of your life. And what, what, is, what is the regime? Just some drops and some gummies? <laughs> it's easy. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing more than that for those patients that are suffering from, from hormonal-based um, hair loss. Now, if you're having hair loss due to excessive styling, then hello, <laughs> let's work on our styling. And that will um, obviously mitigate the hair loss condition. Indeed, indeed. Um, Doc, just remind people how they can connect with MMAC to learn more and possibly for a consultation, should they uh, be interested. Yeah, well, just give us a call. Um, 293-5476 is our, is our phone number. Um, you can go on our website at nmac.bm. Um, you know, everyone knows us down there at North Shore. Just come on by. We're happy to assist you um, and get your hair growing, most importantly. All right, Doc, thank you so much. Honestly, it's, it's a pleasure to have a conversation like this. Um, these are things that, honestly, I, I, <laughs> I think a couple of my boys, a couple of years ago, we were at a wedding, and um, it, we were at a table. Yeah, it's going, but once it's going, I'm, I'm going to and Rooney, right? So I had asked them, like, probably a year or two ago, I uh, said, look, I thought you were getting Louie and Rooney. Man, it's going. No, I'm, not, I'm done. So you saying, you know, hey, look, I can't save you once it's all gone. I think he came to that reality. But I think all people are looking for with anything is options. You know what I'm saying? Options. So I think having, um, you know, even you bringing in the specialist, because what we didn't touch on, I didn't realize until recently when I had to read about this with you coming on, that a lot of people were heading to Turkey mm -hmm. uh, to get treatments for the hair. I, I knew nothing about it. You know, I mean, I, I, I just, I'm not in those spaces. But the fact that you're bringing this option for people, I think is a great thing. And Let's be honest, folks. I mean, m many of people could sit around and say, oh, I don't worry about anyone. I don't care this and that. You know full well your confidence levels go up when you feel a certain way about your hair. Let let's just keep it real. So um, thank you for giving people this option. And I hope, uh, folks, if you know anyone out there who um, might be interested in, in a consultation, reach out to NMAC. Doc, I hope this isn't the last time we see you on the show. Well, maybe not. You know, I'm transitioning to a new role in life, so you may see me a little bit more, but we'll talk about that. But um, I don't want to let people know that the Turkish team is going to be on island from August the 8th to the 20th. Please don't come the day before expect a consultation because we need to get you protocoled and make sure that we have adequate space for you because um, the numbers are limited because the procedure can take four to six hours. So hmm. luckily, there are still space available because most of our patients have done the medical hair restoration program and just have small areas that they need to do. Um, so we can take two patients a day versus doing a full head um, of someone that's brand new, hasn't started any sort of tr medical treatment in the past, and it's going to take a full day of the clinic um, of, and of the restoration team's time. So um, give us a call sooner rather than later. We'll get you in. Um, even if you don't want to come in, you can send us an email with your pictures. I just need the front, the sides, the back. That's it. Then I can get you a quote. Send those off to the Turkish team. Um, and they can come in and get you sorted out. This particular team is very um, used to deal with skin of color or, or, or our Afro here. They actually um, are part of the traveling team um, from the Turkish clinic. Um, so they're in South Africa, Nigeria, hopefully Bermuda is gonna be on their constant rotation list, but we don't know, it all depends on how things go. Um, and then also Jacksonville, Florida. So um, these guys are very, very um, keen on, on taking care of us. Thank you so much, Doc. And um, audience, make sure you reach out. Have a wonderful day, Doc. We'll be in touch. All right, no problem. Thanks for having me, guys. And hope he's not my last, Jamel. Yeah, we hope not. Hope we didn't scare you. Talk soon. <laughs> it was much fun. Thank you. All right, Dr. Kai Wan Brown, folks, if you appreciated that conversation with Dr. Brown, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Make sure you share that conversation with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back after this break. 